Welcome, welcome. This is the Simply King Podcast. It's your boy Rodney Perry King himself. And you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. We are celebrating. It is a celebration. What my what my what my uh what my uh you know what I'm saying? We're celebrating 250 episodes, y'all. 250 episodes. Um, I know that the count might seem off depending on where you where you're listening from, but I did like a double, like a two part episode way back when I counted as one. That's my own little technicality, but it is what it is. Um, I know that you're wondering why did I call this particular episode 250 uh, season finale? Um, I'm, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time with it. But first, I'm going to kind of put these two things together. It's the season finale because I feel like I've never really done seasons at all. I've always just kind of had this running show going on. But more than anything, I think I also have had genuinely, you know, no personal and, 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 and genuine break in a real genuine sense. Um, like I've definitely went on hiatuses. I've obviously missed months, missed weeks of putting things out. But ultimately, I think that I got to a certain space and place that I'll, I'll explain more and more in depth in a second. But checking in overall, something that I want to do more of is checking in on the podcast because I feel like not only should you know where I'm at and how I'm creating, where my mindset is, but also just I think we all need to check in with ourselves more often. And right now, physically, I feel kind of somber. Um, if so, I guess emotionally, I feel somber. Physically, I feel, I don't know, clean. Got Just got out of the shower. I feel real clean. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to just put something on. It's one of my favorite outfits. I feel like I never got, you know, recorded anything. And so I was like, let me, let me put this on. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good vibe. It's good energy. And, um, I was like, let me put some, put some on, get adorn myself a little bit, put the good camera on and, you know, really make it a, really make it something special. And then mentally, I think I am certainly tired. Um, I think I am mentally fatigued in a lot of ways right now uh, for a lot of reasons, for personal reasons, financial reasons, um, just this this feeling of longing. But I don't want to I don't want to, you know, dr drag this whole episode out because I feel like it's already too much personally. But let us get into. How do we get here? How do we get here? where I am thinking to do a season finale overall. And ultimately, because I feel like I'm burying the lead, I am going to, because let me, you know, I'm going to do this live. I'm going to do this live because I've been using this word to describe this plan because I've been plotting on this for some time. And I want to make sure I'm using, nah, that's not really what I want to say then. I would say that I am pausing the Simply King podcast, um, hence the name being the season finale. I am pausing the Simply King podcast for several reasons. And that's what I mean by like, how did we get here? Um, I've been putting out episodes since 2015. Um, I've done so much. I've done so many different things in that time, too, you know, in terms of talking to different people, in terms of moving, in terms of so many in terms of relationships, uh, inspiration for so many things, just spaces that I was in to create. I was all over the place. I've been all over the place. Um, I'm right back where I believe my true kind of, you know, creative awakening happened in Atlanta, Georgia. And I feel that I'm, you know, definitely in a very interestingly new creative bag than I think I've ever been before, to be quite honest. Right now, I feel that I am at a crossroads with myself. I'm turning 31 on the 1st, 
And I feel like I have to really genuinely assess everything that I'm putting so much of my time into. And this was something that was truly birthed out of a way to save me in a way. Like the podcast genuinely, and I know a lot of people may think that's probably being a little dramatic, but at the time of me starting my podcast, I was unemployed. I was newly a newly a graduate looking for work, um, newly in a relationship, only been in a only was in that relationship probably a good four to five months by that time. And I was also cohabitating. I was also I also moved to a new place, in a new state. Um, I put a lot on myself and that was all at 22 years old. And now looking back, um, over the years, I feel like I am in a real interesting space and place in life where I feel like a lot has been afforded to me because I've been a creative, because I've been a creative professional but I'm really realizing that I need to put a certain level of focus to get myself to a new level. And that's hard to do that when I have this particular, you know, looming commitment of the podcast, because it's going to, it's going to affect me. If I'm not staying diligent, if I'm not creating it, it's going to, I'm going to think about it. Cause I already do. I do all the time. Anytime I've, I know when I miss an episode, I know when I miss a show, I know when I'm late on getting something out, I'm the only one putting it out. It's all on me. So it's not like no one has to, I don't have to get any, you know, energy from you all to feel that way. And I'll let you know, like, it took me a minute to get to this place. So I'm glad that it took so much time from the time that I decided this to the time that I actually had to do it. Because in the beginning of when I first had this as a thought of like really assessing everything on my plate, I was sitting there telling myself, like, nigga, you're gonna have to end the podcast. And that shit broke my heart. Um, and then I like started to peel it back, like, oh, maybe you, you're going too far. You don't probably got to end it. Just pause, you know, um, it doesn't have to go away forever. I don't plan on it going away forever, but I do believe that what I know simply King can be, um, it deserves more. It deserves more of my energy, more of my focus, more of my preparation. And I think that I've spread myself so thin in life in life, not even just in my twenties, in my thirties, in my now early thirties, but in life, I've had so many things happening all at once. I've been, I've had this activity and that activity and that activity and this thing to try to make life shake for me. And I think that being that way has only afforded me to feel so, you know, attached to the results and even more unhealthier way, I would say. Like, not every single idea that I have to make money, every single idea to be creative, every single idea that I feel like I have, I feel like it gotta work. I'm so attached to it, you know? And a part of that is definitely social media. Mm, 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 mm. As I sip my wine. Shout out to Erica Parker of the Pine and Silk uh, podcast because she... We uh, actually recorded a, a episode that's coming out soon, a collab episode, um, which, funny enough, will serve as my 251st episode because it's going to more than likely be on my feed as well. Um, so that's a little bonus, a little lost episode. You know how something ends, but then it's still they still give you a little extra. Can't say I didn't do anything for you. Um, but I want to get into that just a little bit, not spend too much time, but get into exactly how I got to this space in terms of how social media affected me as a whole, because I feel like that's important to speak to. So in terms of social media affecting me genuinely in my real life, I think I have been a person who's been on social media since I was in middle school. Um, I feel like I didn't do the traditional way of kind of understanding. I think I did it like so many of us, we just were doing it. And I think once certain ties started to shift and change and I realized that there is a way to do this well and do it right and follow a rule. And this is this isn't just a place for you to be <clears throat> yourself and for you to be creative <coughs> and come up with things. Excuse me. And come up with things like. It was. 
it's gotten weird. Like social media at this point has gotten to a place to where now it's a job. Um, it's not really fun because you have to literally do things, not even for, <clears throat> not even for your follower base per se, but more so what the algorithm deems your followers would like. So it's almost like you have to satisfy your, the algorithm, and then it will show it to your followers. And that's how we get to a certain place in space. But the idea of the algorithm is to bring it to people who are going to be entertained by it anyway. So it really doesn't matter. In my mind, it's like, just put it out. Let the people do the do. Show it to them. Like, there's no reason to, like, dampen the things down and create this level of things. And I've understood social media in a lot of ways. I've been able to help a lot of other people understand their own social media platforms better. And they, I think I've helped a lot of people. But it was at one point in time um, in my own journey and honestly in that recollection of several months ago where I was just like, you know what? I feel like I should be further along. I feel like the podcast should be further along. I feel like I should have, you know, producers, somebody I'm talking to behind the camera. I should have all the help in the world to be able to fulfill this production and for me to be able to talk to whoever the hell I want to talk to and reach at this current stage of my, you know, media career, if you will. But then I had to like really humble myself as to, you know, how I got here. And to me, I think that the biggest part about it more than anything was being attached to the wrong things and not attached to the right things being so enamored and, 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 and so, so, so kind of, you know, driven by the idea of figuring this thing out. Like, I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to master it. That it definitely became the bane of my existence. And that was not good. Not good at all. But it definitely is what it was. Um, but I do believe that, you know, it's been a growing pain. And I think I understand exactly what I need to do. And that's detach. I believe in, you know, the spiritual laws of success. And I think that detachment is something that is really, really important, especially to the things that you have unhealthy attachment to. So I feel like, yes, social media is something I want to still utilize in the future and everything. But I think it's necessary for me to really consider and, and, and take a step back and and like really, you know, look at myself and look at my relationship to social media completely differently because I put so much pressure on myself to do well on it that when it does, when things don't do well, I feel away. And I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. I've seen so many people online who are cre great creators talking about how hard it is, how they feel so drained and diminished in so many ways. Shout out to my sister, Kenya Jones, KM Jones, um, to get some makeup done by KM Jones. If you're in the, you know, the West Tennessee area, um, Oh, she'll travel. You got a budget, she'll travel. But she's like even spoke to, you know, how it's really a job. Like she has a really great following and has so many followers on Facebook where they, you know, she's a part of their creator program. And she feels that energy of like, damn, like I really got to do this every day. There's no day off on getting this money to for this. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's good money. Like once you start getting it, it's kind of like, well, I, why would I stop? You know, why would I? It would be against me to not try to get paid from this thing, you know? So you got to have a very country Wayne approach to this shit, you know? Um, but let's get into something fun. Um, I do have superlatives. It is a 250th episode and I try my best to be as, you know, hand out superlatives as best as I can. Um, and here are the superlatives that I have to point out for this, you know, momentous occasion, this milestone occasion. So obviously the U.S. is the country that listens to my podcast the most, but I can genuinely say that after them is the country of Bangladesh. Shout out to Bangladesh. Hope y'all hearing this. Hope y'all still tapped in with King. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, and then United Kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Block laws, mother. You feel me? They're out here. They're out here. They're out here, you know what I'm saying? Charge it, you know? I, I, I play a lot of y'all music on the Vibe Hour, actually. So shout out to the UK, because y'all are vibey people. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all for uh, tapping in with me, giving me any little listen. 
But uh, the show has been um, downloaded uh, in every continent on the planet. Yes. I checked it before we started. It's true. Obviously, the in the Western Hemisphere. So from Canada to Alaska to, to, you know, the North America, 90 states and also South America is where I am getting plays. You feel me? All types of. Of countries, only a handful of blanks up in there throughout South America, and it's probably because the people don't got internet service. To be quite honest, uh, it's not even going to happen. And I kind of can see that even with across the across the, you know the overall you know continent of the world, continents around the world. Same way in China, I don't think I have a play in China, but China doesn't really have the same internet either. But I digress. Um, in terms of cities, all time. Uh, Kind of states. Let me do states. All time states. Georgia being number one. California being number two. Texas number three. New York number four. And five is Illinois, which I find hilarious because I only have lived in two of those places. And one of them I lived in longer than the one I'm currently living in. I mean, I'm coming up on. It's six years, so I'm it's gonna I'm gonna beat it pretty so I was in Chicago it's about seven years, but you know, nevertheless. Um funny though, extremely funny. In terms of episodes, still holding the crown for most listened to episode is my four hundred years episode, which was my kind of review of the sixteen nineteen project. It still is my most listened to episode of all time. In terms of guests, I have a, a particular guest superlative. That goes to the founder of Peace in the Wild, West Milwaukee, Wisconsin's own Taylor Crenshaw. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure I clip this and let her know you are my number one listen to guest. With two episodes being my Intimacy Personify episode, also featuring Leah Swoops. So shout out to you, Leah. You kind of get a little piece, you know, get a little co, you know. Co, uh, co superlative, you feel me? Um, that was in 2021. Go check out that episode, a great episode. Um, and then the lukewarm summer episode that we did in 2019. So, shout out to you, Taylor. You're amazing. If y'all don't know what Peace in the Wild is, tap in, especially if you're in Atlanta, tap in because once it blows up and they got chapters all over the nation, you're gonna be mad you didn't get in where you could fit in. You feel me? Because she's definitely going that direction where she's gonna take over domestically, and then go global. So get in where you fit in and have you some peace in the wild, um, which is just a black uh, nat- nature enthusiast group. She gets black people outside doing activities outside in nature and various things. It's real cool things. Get into it. Go and. Um, at this time, I've interviewed about 80 individual guests. And um, I really genuinely want to take this moment since I'm, you know, already giving thanks to let my guests know that I genuinely am so, 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 so humbled by the fact that you even gave me your voice, that you requested to be on the pod, that uh, maybe I asked and you accepted my, you know, invitation. Um, I've had the likes of, you know, people who have submitted you know, awards to the Grammys. I've had people who have worked on television, people who are executives, people who are CEOs and entrepreneurs, people who are creatives in multitudes, in so many multitudes, people who are doing the dopest shit in the world right now, in the world. Because I've had people in multiple countries to come and feature on the show. Make sure you go check those out. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Eddie Khan, you feel me, who's been on the show several times. Um, shout out to Fabia, you know what I'm saying, in Brazil. Um, and shout out to Lauren in Australia, too. You know what I'm saying? So I've had a good bit of, you know, international guests. So only more to come. Only more to come. Um, but I really thank you and appreciate you for you even coming on to the pod in 250th episodes. like. All the contributions you've given have been some of the best, best things I can speak to, speak from. And I can't wait to, you know, potentially create more with you and um, and keep on supporting you and you keep on supporting me. So I really genuinely thank 
everyone who's ever been on the Simply King podcast. I really, truly do. And I'm forever grateful for exactly you just give me your voice and you just entertaining any of my nonsense. You feel me? I really, truly appreciate you. And now we get to, I guess, kind of the tail end of this particular celebratory episode. I feel like I haven't made it so celebratory. I feel like I am such a emo nigga these days. I don't know what's going on, but I feel like it's the real. And, um, and, and I think that this is a part of the story overall. I think that's why I'm not tripping too much about how this, how the tone of it might sound or anything like that, because I think it's just a reality of where I'm at and how I feel. And should I be happy about <laughs> like pausing my show? I don't think so. I don't think so. It, I, I know that it's for a good reason, for sure. I know I'm going to be able to expand so much. Um, but let's talk about what's next. So what's happening next is um, I am going to take, a, like I spoke to earlier, I'm going to take a break from social media as a whole. I want to do a social media fast after my birthday, which is June 1st. Um, so from June 2nd to July 2nd, I'm trying to be off of social media uh, almost 100%. Um, I would say probably about 99% because the 1% of me posting about Remedy Wednesdays is more than likely going to happen at least twice um, in the month of June, which I more than likely can already have that preset and ready to go by next week. So that those are kind of already set on a particular schedule and um, all the content from that is kind of set on a particular schedule. Uh, and I just kind of, you know, push that out through text message, stuff like that, and just send it directly to people like, hey, give me your number. I'm not even going to be online for the whole month. That's probably what I'm going to do. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a lot of people's numbers so I can just text them things. You feel me? Um, but I feel like I need to. I really, I, need, I really need to detach from social media, think about it differently, feel differently about it, read more, take in more, write more, and just be more present with myself be more clear minded um, and take off, take a, take a load off more than anything and come at it with a whole new sense of creative flair or creative energy. And a feeling that I genuinely feel less pressure and less uh, fatigued by the idea of just creating for social media as a whole. And, um, and when I come back, I think I'll come back even stronger and be able to be a lot more refreshed is kind of what I'm calling in and what I'm believing from this particular fast. And I'm a fast nigga in real life. Like I like to do intermittent fasting, so I know the benefits of letting certain things go. And um, I genuinely believe that that's something that's gonna benefit me. Um, but I am planning on, by the time, I would say probably by the time um, July comes around, I want to initiate a brand new venture, a brand new platform um, on Substack. Uh, I'm hoping I need to check on Substacks because uh, <laughs> last time I created something new on a pl whole new platform, they didn't last two months. So that was when I did the Vibe Hour and 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 uh, what was it? A Amp from Amazon. Them niggas was gone by Halloween and Guy Lee. But uh, Substack is a application where you basically it kind of feels like a. Uh, kind of like a personal premium blog site in a way like you can have premium features where you have things behind a paywall but also you can have free things where people write uh you know all these various things from blogs you can post different articles and how you feel about certain articles you can post videos all different types of things and i think that for me i would love to try to try to you know gain a new um sense of community with people who that's where they are. That's where they like to consume things by reading and and sharing various different, you know, pieces of literature or personal works. And I just really want to get in my writer's bag again. I feel like I only write from a recreational context or a personal context. But writing creatively is something that I think I really only flex my muscle every now and again when I do things for the podcast or create things, you know, that I'm going to say online in some way shape or form or doing content for businesses i really want to be able to just you know do more cultural analysis where i'm taking certain things in and i'm approaching this more journalistic type of way 
Um, something that I just feel very called to do, you know. Um, shout out to Jeff Johnson. He followed me back on Instagram. I think that that's a good sign, a good omen, if you will. Shout out to my best friend, Lou, who said she was, I feel like you're going to be like the next Jeff Johnson. I think that's a hell of a compliment. Um, and I hope he, hope he DMs me back. I know he's seen the DM, but, you know, I'm hoping that I can get me a new mentor out of him. You know what I'm saying? Because that would be. So if y'all know Jeff, let him know I hit him up and that I would love to connect and just pick his brain if I can. Um, but uh, I just really want to just build a, a more genuine online community as a whole. Uh, so even when I come back, I think that that's the type of time I'm going to be on anyway. I'm going to vlog more. I'm going to post on YouTube a lot more. Um, I'm going to simplify my processes of editing and find best practice and like learn more better practices in terms of increasing my presence online and making it less um, uh, laborious, if you will. And just feel good about things. Just feel good again. Because like, I don't want to fall out of love for the medium that I feel like truly changed my life, that saved my life. Uh, if I, it wasn't for podcasting at the time, I was looking for work, uh, you know, fresh out of college, looking for work, and I didn't know what the fuck to do. And my, you know, good friend, um, Stretch, who's been on the podcast several times, Elijah Green, um, came on and, you know, he just kind of hit me up randomly when he... When I already had said, like, hey, I should start a, when I was in college, I was like, I should start a, you know, y'all y'all should know uh, the story, but I should start this radio show. And it, because it didn't happen, he hit me up and was like, hey, why don't you do a podcast? And doing this podcast made me be able to focus my energy, focus my sense of, you know, attention to something that was genuinely beneficial to me um, in so many ways, because it made me be able to not stay in a bubble. Because if I didn't have it, I would have been even more of a hermit in Chicago. I would have been even more of a, a recluse, introverted person. And that is not really who I am at all. Like I said, I'm a Gemini. Birthday's on the first. How many Geminis y'all know that be put up? Not that many. And if they are, it's usually a reason. It's a problem. You know what I'm saying? We're not really put up type of people. We'll be outside. So, but we're good with ourselves as well. But still, um, I'm glad that the podcast afforded me a way to not be too far away to always be committed to staying connected and to just be able to continuously put my, my uh, opinion and my, my story and my, you know, this kind of personal journey out there uh, in some way, shape or form, you know, this podcast has been able to, has been literally able to document parts of my love life, parts of my mental health journey, uh, parts of my, you know, self as a business and certain personal and adult decisions and life happenings has been able to do so much. It's been able to, you know, literally bear witness to me making new brand new friendships and brand new connections with people that I'm still connected with today. It's truly been the diary of my life. Simply King has been so much to me and I can't, I can't feel any more grateful than how I feel right now about it. I feel like, it's something that was meant to be, something that had to be, something that feels great that it exists, something that I didn't, you know, steer away from or feel hesitant to do. And no matter how many moments and times I, I, I questioned my ability and questioned if this was something that I was really should be doing, I stayed at it. And I want y'all to know that every single, I remember every single person, every single time anyone has told me that they've listened to the podcast, they've been moved by the podcast, they fuck with the podcast to keep doing it, to keep growing, to keep staying at it. You've been, you know, you've been doing it longer than a lot of other people. You OG in this shit. Like you, you are, you predate the, the podcast niggas of today. Um, all the great positive sentiments that people give me, I certainly don't take lightly. I take that shit really deeply. And it definitely is the thing that kept me going and kept me steadfast because it's no, it's, it's people who know about podcasting understand like, yes, it's a lucrative business. If you, if you just happen to be so lucky, <laughs> but this is, if you don't have a true passion for the thing, it's hard to stay at it. It's hard to stick with it. Uh, 
because it's not just money just flowing out of everything for this thing. You got to really work towards it, work at it to get anything, get any so, any form of value or be able to leverage value out of it in any way, shape or form. And I think for me, I am truly elated with being a podcaster, with being somebody that you got, you all have given attention to, you know, tens of thousands of you have given attention to over the spans of, you know, of years. And I genuinely am humbled more than anything. I genuinely am humbled. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying my best not to get emotional, but I do feel, I do feel a lot of ways. I really do feel a lot of ways. And right now, I think it's time to send it on. So, today's sending it on is simple. It is really simple. Um, I just want you to give me good energy. Uh, I want you to let me know what you feel about the pod. Let me know what you feel like your best memories are. If you never listened to the podcast, it's your first time listening. Whoa. Uh, go back. <laughs> Tell me some good news about what's going on in your life so I can forever be inspired. I love to, you know, praise and let you know it's 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 graduation season. It's come up season. The summertime's coming. You're working on that body. Whatever it is, I want you to feel good and be good to yourself. And give me some books. I need some. I need something to fill up my time when I'm away from social media because I want to be a, a, a better reader. You feel me? But that's all I need. That's all it is. That's to send it on. You can follow me everywhere at Kings underscore Memoirs. You can follow the podcast at Simply King Pod. Still follow the podcast page. Still follow the podcast page. Once I'm back on social media, I more than likely post older clips and just, you know, try out a new, new ways of posting clips from um, from previous archived episodes because a lot of my shit be evergreen anyway. It's, everything's coming back uh, to the forefront. You feel me? So tap in, tap in, tap in. And um, follow me everywhere, like I said, at Kings underscore Memoirs. And tap into all updates on what's happening with my sub stack, what's happening on all fronts. If you're here locally in Atlanta, Georgia, I've been doing this really great music based uh, music experience in downtown uh, Atlanta called Remedy Wednesday. Tap in with me. Um, follow my page so that you can get all updates on that. The next one's actually happening on Wednesday. So if you're listening and you're in Atlanta or near Atlanta, Come on by. It's free um, at 7 p.m. at Brooklyn T right off of Nelson Street, right downtown, not too far away from the Georgia Mercedes Benz Stadium. I was say I was about to say Georgia Dome. Anywho, um, less outro, uh, a less a less long outro. I'll give. Uh, this has been dope. This has been great. This has been the 250th episode. I have been riding Perry, also known as King. Uh, this has been the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. Peace. <laughs>